असतोमा सद्गमया तमसोमा ज्योतिर्गमया मित्रोर्मा अमृत गमया ओ शांति 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 ओ लीडर्स फ्रॉम द अनरियल टू द रियल lead us from darkness to light lead us from death to immortality om peace 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 good morning good morning, good morning. with all these technologies all these gadgets i feel more and more that less is more <laughs> first this should work properly this should work properly <laughs> this should work properly the screen should be visible and the video camera <laughs> with those of us who use technologies like uh, mobile phone smartphone laptop we very easily understand that how less is more the less pictures we have in our phone more space are available <laughs> less files we have in our laptop more space is available in our hard disk less friends we have in our facebook <laughs> more time we have for our real friends <laughs> and most importantly less we know something about that more confident we are about that <laughs> so this is less is more so i would like to start with a story it appears in bhagavatam in the ninth chapter of bhagavatam there king bali who was a mighty king and was a king of a large kingdom he was once performing a sacrifice ashwamedha sacrifice the horse sacrifice is a big one goes on for days together and during those sacrifices anybody comes to the king the king gives a in charity whatever the person asks for he was king bali so he was performing ashwamedha sacrifice then lord vishnu in the form of a dwarf bamana appeared before him. and seeing the form of bamana everybody was astonished that here is a dwarf but he appears to be extraordinary uh, in his effulgence and as if he has performed a lot of austerity and he is a wise person so immediately king bali went to him and said sir you appear to be a very wise person so since i am now giving away things in charity ask me what do you want whatever you want if it is within my capacity i will give it to you then bamana asked him okay give me 3 feet of land that means i will take 3 steps and as much land i can cover in 3 steps give me that piece of land imagine he is a dwarf how much his 3 steps would constitute there is of course a divine plan behind that then bali says you are speaking like a, although you appear to be a very mature person a wise person but you are speaking like a child you are asking from a king like me who has a big kingdom only 3 feet of land ask something more 
only three feet of land. Then Bhavana says something very profound. He says, Yavantaha Vishaya Priyashta Trilokyam Ajita Indriyam Na Shaknu Vanti Te Sarve Prati Purayitam Nipa. Whatever wealth there could be in the three worlds cannot satisfy a man if he is not content. Then he says that if you give him one island and he is not satisfied, he would ask for seven islands. If you give him seven islands to dwell, since he is not satisfied, he would ask for more. Even seven islands cannot satisfy him. So, to a discontent person, no amount of wealth is enough. Similarly, in Mahabharata 2, Bhishma says that there is enough in this world to meet the needs of people. But if the wealth of entire world presented to a small village, that is not sufficient to satisfy the wants. Enough is there to satisfy the needs, but not enough to satisfy the wants. So, this is the distinction between want and need. Need is limited, want is unlimited. How to decide what is need and what is want? Mm. By asking a fundamental question, if a particular thing, absence of a particular thing increases a void in our life, then that is needed. But if his absence creates a manageable unease, then it is only wanted. So this is a question we can ask, what is our need and what is our want? Moreover, want and need, it is contextual or an historical too. Once upon a time, telephone was a luxury. Now it is a need. With changing times, once become need. So, we cannot say that this is need, this is want objectively. Only we have to decide ourselves what is want and what is need. And in this connection, I remember, in the headquarters of, in, in our main monastery at Belumat, in the headquarters office, there is a telephone uh, APPX, where the operator sits and routes the telephone connections to different departments. There, there is a quotation. Mm -hmm. Whenever you go, uh, that will first attract you. It really attracted me. It reads like that. Utility is when you have one telephone. Luxury is when you have two. Opulence is when you have three and paradise when you have none. <laughs> so, just opposite to the fundamental question of what is need and what is want, why we should ask this question, what is need and what is want? Because we are now under the grip of consumerism and consumerism speaks about just the opposite more is better it wants to create an illusion in us the more we have the more happy we would be especially in america 
America is a consumerist country. 5% of world's population consume 34% of world's goods. And more consumption there is, more, more is the waste, right? We can see on Thursdays how much waste, how much recycled bins, garbage bags, garbage bins are there in front of our houses. Even they seem to be inadequate. Probably we need more and more. So this consumerism, how does it operate? It wants to create a false illusion in us that the product it advertises is really a need for us. Through different advertisements, constant advertisements, it wants to create an illusion. The product that we are seeing is not a want, it is a need. And there is also such a thing called bandwagon effect. That is, we see others using some product, unknowingly we feel that that product is also needed for us. This creates an artificial need in us. Then there is the American dream, a great American dream, having a big house big car, too many wardrobes, full of clothes. So this is the American dream. Then what, again, there were many factors which have contributed to this American consumerism. Earlier, before I think 1980, we could per we could purchase things only after going to market. We used to be tempted by things only after going to the market. Then I was reading that the history of consumerism, how it came. LL Bean, LL Bean started sending by mail its products. Okay, so you need not have to have to go to market to be tempted by the products. The, and you know, then uh, you are tempted sitting in your own house. <laughs> and yeah, and now it is, all of us know how uh, in television, we cannot imagine television without advertisements. We cannot imagine websites without ads. We cannot imagine social media with subtle ads, uh, even Google search, if you search anything, the first two, three uh, ser um, uh, searches will be ad, sponsored ad, and constantly you will be receiving emails from Amazon products, <laughs> about products, or people who purchase these also purchase these. <laughs> The recommendations of product, <laughs> recommendation of products based on your browsing history. You like something or you search something, price of that has dropped. <laughs> so this is really one thing uh, they, uh, the psychologists have found out that the deal, deals that we often see in websites or even in um, the shopping malls, they are also um, responsible for our mindless purchase. <laughs> Simply there is a deal, we purchase it. We don't ask ourselves whether it is really needed or not. <laughs> and also, our instant purchase capacity with the advent of credit card, online banking, this consumerism has gone up. And since consumerism says that more is better, more we purchase, better it is, 
consumerism has also contributed to corruption. Since when we have not enough means for having money legitimately, but we want to have more and more, it leads to corruption. So why we seek more and more material things? One of the reasons could be, if you know uh, about Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs, he speaks about a few fundamental needs human beings need to fulfill. First is the basic needs, material needs, then psychological needs, social needs, then need for self-actualization and lastly he said that need for self-transcendence. What happens is that when we falsely think when our higher needs, psychological needs or social needs are not being fulfilled, we want to fill that void with material needs. And it has been found that the loneliness, more lonely a people, a person is more prone to material purchase he or she is. So it, it is some, some of the psychologists believe that Americans have a lonely lifestyle. They are lonely. They are not having a social lifestyle. That is one of the reasons why Americans are so much into purchasing. So we are trying to fulfill our higher needs with materials. This is one of the reasons why American society is so much consumerist. Just opposed to consumerism is a phenomenon called minimalism. I came across this some 5-6 years ago when I was designing a website for one of our brand centers which did not have a website. So I was learning how to design a website, learning so that I can do myself. Then I came into the concept of minimalism. So many websites you will find that so many features are there. Nowadays you can have so many features in your website. So one is one feels tempted to add more and more feature into a website. Although it becomes so cluttered, it's not user friendly. Right? So the principle is that since you can add as many things in your website does not mean that your website will be a good one. Opposed to that is the minimalist design where the website is, the layout is very soothing, pleasing and very easy to navigate. This is minimalism. I can show you one example. This is a cluttered website. <laughs> and it is San Francisco Weekly. Okay? What not? This is a minimalist website of a uh, bicycle. So clean. So it has been found that minimalist websites draw more people. Easy to navigate, easy to understand. So, minimalism says that simplicity is better than elaborate embellishment. Sometimes, something simple is better than something advanced or complicated. You uh, probably also are aware of Scandinavian furniture, which are simple, and also Minimalist architecture, simple houses, keeping the bare minimum things, right? 
Here is a traditional or cluttered living room. Here is a minimalist <laughs> living room. Only things which are barely essential are kept there. Then I came across a website called The Minimalist. <laughs> Have you heard of? Yes. Minimalist. Okay. Two young guys, Joshua and his friend Ryan. Success, they were very successful CEOs earning six digit salary, living in houses more than 5,000 square feet, having more, more than one luxury sport cars, multiple wardrobes, and were chasing their American dreams, got fed up, and started living the minimalist life. And their website has got 20 million followers in America alone who are trying to adopt the minimalist lifestyle. So how did they adopt the uh, minimalist lifestyle? The, the Joshua, Joshua's story I can tell that as I said he was <clears throat> living in a big house and having more cars and he was working a lot so that he can maintain a luxurious lifestyle but he was not happy the more he was he was purchasing a lot but still he was not happy contentment there was not no contentment then his mother who was living in florida died so he went to florida to his mother's apartment and saw that her mother had so many things, so many things left behind for Joshua. So what Joshua should do? He called you haul. Give, send me the biggest truck you have. They said it will take two days. Okay, I can wait. <laughs> and he also booked the biggest possible store, you know, capa uh, the uh, storage, storage room possible to uh, book. He booked it. Then he see, he thought that since it will take the U haul two days to come, let me see how many things my mother had for me. So he saw that painting, drawing, then clothes, garments, what not. And he found something interesting. He found four small boxes. One, two, three, four numbered there. So he opened. So what those boxes contained? It was Joshua's homework when he was a kindergarten student. <laughs> His mother kept them to keep the memory, sweet memory of related to Joshua. Then he got the idea that we want to keep things, preserve things with the idea that they are associated with memories. But never probably we open them again to see what is there. So immediately he, it was a life changing experience for him. At that moment, he cancelled the U-Haul, don't send me, he cancelled the space, he took pictures of everything his mother had left for me, him. He thought if memory is important, I am sure these things I am never going to use. Important is the memory, so let me have only pictures of them. If I want to see my mother's belongings, I can look at them. This, then he came back to his house, he started doing something very important. He said, every day I wanted to figure out what are the things which I don't need. He started giving to charity or sell them so that the money he can utilize for better purpose. And with that, after only a few, he took six months 
to declutter his home. After six months he felt there is only a few things who, what he really needed, what he really values. Then he sold his house, moved to a single house apartment. And also he got a friend, Ryan, who had a similar story. They now run the website Minimalist, write books, blogs, and pursue things which are really meaningful to them. And they say in their website, getting rid of things is not the most important thing. One should be clear why one should be getting rid of things. One, they say that we are trying to get rid of things, we are trying to simplify our life so that we have more time left for things we really care for. We have more energy left for things we really care for. We have peace of mind. We have less cost for maintenance of our big houses. A few days ago, one of our friends <coughs> invited us for a cup of tea. We went to their house and they are two aged people. They are living in a 5,000 square feet house. They say they are finding it very difficult to maintain. Uh, once it was needed when they had children, but now they have grown. They are grown up and settled at many places. Now they want to sell that house. They are not getting buyers. Such a, for such a big house. So they say uh, Joshua and Ryan, um, Ryan that. Minimalism is a tool that can assist you in finding freedom. Freedom from fear, freedom from worry, freedom from overwhelm, freedom from guilt, freedom from depression, freedom from the trappings of the consumer culture <coughs> we have built our lives around. Real freedom. That does not mean there is anything inherently wrong with owing, with owning material possessions. Today's problem seems to be the meaning we assign to our stuff. We tend to give too much meaning to our things, often forsaking our health, our relationships, our passions, our personal growth and our desire to contribute beyond ourselves. If we had to sum it up in a single sentence, we would say minimalism is a tool to rid yourself of life excess in favor of focusing on what is important so you can find happiness, fulfillment and freedom. Related to this minimalism movement, another movement is gaining momentum, tiny house movement. You can find it thetinylife.com Many people are now going for living in tiny houses. So the statistic says that average American owns a house of 2,600 square feet. It has increased from, from year to year. 2,600 square feet. Now average Americans own a house and also statistics shows that an average American spends more than $1 million for a house over the lifetime. The price of the house may not be $1 million. They say that it comes to around $290,000. But maintenance and debt, the loan and etc. all together it comes over $1 million. So, in opposed to that, the tiny house movement encourages people to live in house within 800 square feet. And they have several designs how to design a tiny house. Say so they want to downsize the space they live in, simplify and live with less. And so that 
they can leave smaller environmental footprint, greater financial freedom, and ultimately a self-sufficient life. The tiny home movement enables you to live a life on your own terms. The person who started the tiny life movement, he says that you won't believe, he says, you won't believe he has now bills, electricity and all bills together for his house less than $100 per month. So he has more savings and he likes to travel all over the world with the extra money he has saved, he travels all over the world. So, so thing is, the important thing is that live, sacrificing these material needs for some greater purpose. That can be environmental concern or greater freedom in life. And so this living a simple life could have several goals. Right? And for a spiritual person who is trying to live a spiritual life, for him or her, living a simple life is to have more quality time to dwell on things which are spiritual. So that one can have more time, more quality time to pursue one's spiritual goal. So less of what? Less of expenditure, less of debt, less of unnecessary staff, less of waste, less of maintenance. And more of what? More of quality time, more of financial security, peace of mind and healthy living. I remember Swami Vivekananda after returning from the West, he said that Eastern civilization has shown the world how happy one would be with less things. And the Western civilization has shown the world how unhappy one would be with more things. <laughs> of course, now we cannot say like this. Even Eastern, Eastern civilization like India, China and all, they are also consuming more and more. But still today, an average American consumes equal to 38 Chinese people and 118 Indians consumption. Still today. So I remember in Patanjali Yoga Sutra there is a uh, small sutra. Sutra. I, whenever I remember about sutra or aphorisms, they are the classic example how less is more. <laughs> Within a few words, how many things they speak. So there is a aphorism about the virtue of santosha, contentment. It says, santosha anuttama sukhalabha. From contentment comes the highest joy. Because when desire is absence, you are happy. Nothing, the joy you have when you are contented, that joy is unsurpassable. Nothing can come to that joy, being content with whatever you have. Holy Mother Sarada Devi also said, there is no wealth equal to contentment. So, as why I am speaking so much about minimalism? Because minimalism is also a spiritual value. Tyaga, renunciation. But Tyaga becomes a value only when we are pursuing a higher goal, a meaningful goal. I remember Swami Ranganathananji, he spoke to us when we were young and a profound impact he made on our lives with one example. He said, look, when you are in our house, you are having a lot of things, things you need, you keep. But suppose you are traveling in train 
in India we is travel a lot in train. You don't carry all your stuff. You carry only things which you really need. Suppose you are traveling in uh, flight, in aeroplane. You carry lesser amount of things, still lesser than trains. But for a spiritual person who is pursuing spiritual goal, your goal, your travel is a space travel. <laughs> you are traveling in space. So, less you carry, the more free you are. Indeed, it is such a joy to have less things. Such a joy. Uh, I, I can say about myself that when I became a monk, when I left my home, I came only with one shirt and pant and having only one book, Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. That was my belonging. So over the years I saw how things started accumulating. I saw that I had one bag after four years, having few more clothes. Then after two years more I saw I had two bags. <laughs> then when I was about to come here I saw I had two bags of things and many more books. So I, I, I understood how I have started accumulating things. So I, then I decided that what are the things I really need so that within one hour's notice I can leave any place. If I am asked to leave this place in one hour's notice, am I ready to leave? And very often I ask my this question. And it, it is so liberating to feel that, yes, even in 10 minutes I can leave. <laughs> uh, so, Swami Gambhirananda, it is not me alone. I mean, uh, I follow uh, other great Swamis. For example, Swami Gambhirananda ji, who was a embodiment of dispassion, detachment, he used to keep a bag ready a small bag, ready always. So others I used to ask, Samiji, what is this bag for? He said, this bag, with this bag I can leave any moment. So I, very often I look at this bag, it gives me a joy and strength. That no matter what, I can leave this, this moment with this bag. And I saw another monk, uh, when I was in a one of the brand centers of Ramakrishna Mission. He came from another place to take charge of that center. So we were waiting for his arrival. He came with a small bag, this much bag. Two, three pieces of cloth and a book, Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. Then he came, he had his room, he had many books. Over the period of time, he stayed there for 10 years. Books, one cassette player and other things accumulated. Then when he was asked to go and take charge of another center, we saw he left with the bag he came. He, he brought out his bag, the small bag, two clothes, one gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. And we got the lesson that it is man who makes money, not the other way around. If we are anywhere, things will come. So he was there, he loved books, books came, he used to love listening to music, cassette player came, cassettes came, CD player came. He left, wherever he will be, things will come. So we are more important than our stuff. So this, this is really a great strength great joy and liberating feeling that how less we can live with. When I was coming from uh, Singapore to San Francisco, I had three suitcases, you know, and checked in. Two of them contained books, one of them contained, contained my clothes. So in the flight I, I was asking, what if all these are lost? <laughs> 
am I going to lose anything important? What is most important for me now? Then I found, apart from myself, my passport was most important. <laughs> so I thought, okay, let me have that passport with me. Anything else can be added later on. So, felt so easy, you know. So, uh, some practical advices, what I have found, which can help us to have, uh, find or to know what is, need and what is want that once in a year or whatever time frame you may choose we should have a ritual to declutter our life once in a while we should declutter and we should look things which we have not used in last one year things which we have not used in last one year probably we are not going to use in last next one year or next 10 years the problem is, you know, there is a question comes to our mind, just in case, <laughs> and that is the danger, just in case, just in case I need this, never it will happen, that case will happen, okay, we can, we can stuff our freezer with frozen fruits, one year old, ten year old, five year old, just in case we need, never it will come. Never that need will come. No need to keep things in deep freezer. <laughs> and this is a trap, just in case. And secondly, we should cut at the source, when we are just going to have it. At the very beginning, we should ask the question, is it really needed? And most of the times, I have seen for me, in times choosing books, Maybe this book I will need. No. At the very moment you decide, see the content, how much you are interested to read this book. If you are not strongly motivated to read this book, don't purchase that book. You are probably never going to read that book. It is only going to uh, increase your clutter. Lastly, I would say that I was charmed to see uh, read one article by one economist of Washington University, that he said that he was speaking about American consumerism. He said that consumerism teaches us to worship the false god of matter. So it, it should be replaced, but replaced by what? What god we should worship? If we replace the goal of consumerism, then what goal we should replace with? He says that two more important goals. One is interpersonal relationship and second pursuing a transcendental goal. How close it is with Vedanta. That human beings interpersonal relationship is much more important than having stuff. As they say that we are, we, we were supposed to use things and value people, now we value things and use people. It should be other way around. And secondly, having transcendental goal. So he says that spiritual needs or the need for interpersonal relationship cannot be replaced with material needs. Social needs cannot be fulfilled by material needs. I believe personally that Vedanta society has great role to play in it. Those people who want to live a simple but simple but a life of simple living but high thinking, a minimalist life they are in fact minority in the society because society always advocate people, worship people who live with more and more. Those minority of people who want to live a simple life with high thinking, they should be encouraged in Vedanta society. Vedanta society should be a platform where people who wish to live 
a simple by high living should have company of those like-minded people. And that economicist also says that instead of having consumerist goals, one should have good interpersonal relationship and also volunteer for common goals. That is also a scope Vedanta society should prove, should provide to its members. And the third one, the transcendental goal that is always there for Vedanta societies. With this, I want to conclude my talk and I hope I have been able to <coughs> express what I wanted to express, the joy, the freedom, the richness of a minimalist life. Thank you. Next Sunday, uh, September 23rd, the Sunday lecture will be delivered by Sami Prabhupada and the topic is Life After Death. Wednesday 19th, Sami Prabhupada will continue giving his class on Uddhava Gita at 7.30 pm. And on September 22nd, Saturday at 7.30 pm, there will be the discourse on Ram Krishna Vivekananda literature. It will be given by Swami Prabhupada Ji.
and the oceans give forth blessedness. May the herbs and plants bring us health and happiness. Sweet unto us be the nights and dawns. May every particle of Mother Earth be charged with blessings. May the heavens shower us with benediction. Sweet unto us be the noble forest trees. Sweet unto us be the shining sun. Sweet unto us be the all living creation. Om Sweetness, Harmony, Peace.